Now you've clicked on this video because either you're just interested in seeing me um, change a clasp and you want to know how that's done, or you're interested in the Seiko Saab 33 or 35, you know about these watches already, and you understand that one of the things that people complain about is the lack of micro adjust on the clasp. And you can buy other entire strap replacements. Obviously I sell those in my store, but I don't sell bracelets. If you want to still have a bracelet, you can get strap code bracelets, but they're quite expensive. I thought, well, I don't want to change the whole standard bracelet, which is so lovely, so well finished, so well made. Um, just because the clasp doesn't quite have enough micro adjust to fit me. Some people it'll fit perfectly and other people not so much. I unfortunately was in the latter category. I was either a tiny bit too tight on my wrist or it was way too loose. I just couldn't get it right. So I did an experiment. I bought from Strapco just one of their... Uh, clasps one of their buckles and it's a diver style and it cost me $35 and was shipped in about two weeks and that is the clasp I'm using for this video and this is just a guide of how I did this and hopefully I couldn't find any other resources online uh, for how to do this there's one very very difficult to find for fairly vague uh, description on, on a forum I'm going to show you exactly everything you need to know if you've got one of these watches, this is how you do it. So let's get straight into this. I've taken the new class boss, so it's a bit easier for me to show you what kind of things you have to swap around on here to get this to work. So the way you take the original clasp off is you use one of these spring bar removal tools with the end set at the, it's like a pin like that. And you basically poke in one of the holes each side and that releases the spring and the same at this end. So what you're then left with is it's still attached to the watch, but this part here is the other end of the clasp. That part there was there. I've swapped them around. I'll tell you why you do that in a minute. But the first thing you need to do is to take everything off the watch as you will have to have released this part of the clasp off of this part of the bracelet. So it was in there. It's held in place by a pin and collar system. The way you release that is using one of these and you effectively would have unwound it. Links to all these tools will be in the description just to help you out. And you effectively would have rested this in here. It tells you the direction in which the pin is likely to have come out because there's arrows underneath, which I'll show you. So there's arrows at point. So that's the way you want to push it. This at the moment has got the new spring bar put in here, so I'm not taking it out because it's a tight fit. But the original way that this was attached in there would have been released by screwing this. It would have pushed the pin out, and then you would have it would have looked like this, and you would have pulled it out, and then that would have come away. As simple as that. And then you retain the pin and collar, and I've kept them in this bag so they're safe for the future if I ever need it again. But then that's all the parts the original standard Seiko clasp removed. So that can be put aside. So now what we needed to have done is you go, right, you would have had this part at the 12 o'clock uh, position, if you will. So that's the 12 o'clock position. It would have been up here. And then this part was down here. I'll swap them round because you'll see when I put the watch back together again, why? So you swap it around by simply using the removal of the pin and collar system again by using this tool to remove and then you relocate them at the opposite ends of the watch. Now the reason why this straight part needs to be at this part is because the way I like to undo my straps is like how 99% of people will undo the uh, clasp is here's the new one then the other end is where you've got the bit that you will see is this part where there's the fold over piece. That's the piece you're gonna see. So that's why I swapped it round. So you have this end here. So that's gonna go in there like that. So you would have seen if you had still left in there, this piece, which has the notch out. That's why we have to be a bit creative here. So we swap them around, we know that already. So this is the part that's now gonna to attach to this part. This is the 18 mil strap code clasp because the width of this strap this bracelet is just a shade under 18 mil and then the part that it's going to fit into 
it's just a shade over so you've got a tiny bit of moving in there which is fine that's well within tolerances you don't want it really tight and it's not going to be loose that you'll notice so now we know where this part of the clasp is going to attach to the strap what we need to do is get the spring bar which i took out which is this one this was the original seiko part i've retained it it's a bit thinner and the thickness of it just for reference is 1.1 1.2 whereas a standard spring bar for reference i'll get one out for you so you know how thick a normal spring bar can be do you think these are fatter ones actually no, sir, these aren't the fat ones that's 1.7 you can see why later on we're gonna have to do a little bit of drilling but don't be scared yet because the drilling part is actually really easy so that's why you need to keep that it is obviously thinner than a standard spring bar because it's part of the original clasp so we've kept that that will still fit through this part of the uh, seiko bracelet so we poke that in there try not to drop it so oh, looking for a camera and doing this at the same time i must concentrate so we know that's got to go in here so we line that up there and we use a spring bar removal tool just to get that bit in there so that bit is now on so he's using the original st standard seiko bar fits in there perfectly and as you can see i swapped the notched end round with this straight end piece because you can see that bit there now this is the bit where there's a little bit of modification going on see this one here this is originally was housing just to remind you this part of the original clasp this 1.2 mil thick spring bar again from the original clasp doesn't quite fit through this end because this was held in place if you remember before by a pin and collar system so what i'm doing is i'm having to bore this out a tiny bit more now all you have to do to do that is a piece of cake get one of these as a hobbyist mini drill and in the set you get so many drill bits down from look how thin that is tiny and then you get ones right up to probably three or four mil i found one in there by using my calipers it was exactly 1.2 millimeters i put the drill bit in here i'll just grab a random one just to show you that's that's the wrong size but give you an idea so i'm not going to rummage through that lot again you just twizzle it to get, opens up the jaws drop the bit in and then you grip it then all i did was i held it in my hands and i lined up just to get it to bite it didn't have this spring bar in there by the way obviously and what i did is that there was the hole there already so i just bored the hole out by drilling by hand being very careful took about five to ten minutes to get both sides done and you know it's gone through because you'll see the drill bit poking out the other side and when that's done i knew i could then i'll just push fit it's a nice snug fit the again the, the thin 1.2 mil thick spring bar which again from the standard clasp in there and that was it that's ready for you to then click it in here which i'll do now and uh, show you how well it fits and that's it guys you don't get you can't see anything there when you undo it there's no unsightly notch there because i've swapped those links around that's that perfect fit there you get the extra benefit of fold over um, security there and then we've got i'm using the outer link to see because before i only had two micro links on the original clasp as you can see here i just needed one more just to give it that little bit of space because it felt a bit tight wearing it throughout the day i felt it just got there were points where it just felt like it was crushing my wrist the what strap but then if i put one whole link in or and then went back in one more micro adjust it was really 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 loose so to get that ability to get it to fit me perfectly all i had to do was this with a few basic tools and it took me probably 15 minutes all in and i've I just love the standard bracelet on the Saab and I just thought the only thing letting it down was the clasp you haven't got the unsightly gap that it used to have and we've got it fitting nicely that's it hope you've enjoyed my little how-to video I'll see you in another one in the future and if you haven't subscribed yet please do I've got loads of content and I'm happy to share it with you so thanks for now see you in the next one bye for now